Last time we made a merry-go-round that was not centered at the origin, and so we had to do a few tricks to make it to rotate properly. And we had a little box on our merry-go-round, and we got the box to rotate like this with the merry-go-round. Instead of rotating around the origin like it would if we had just used a regular rotation matrix. But that was a big hassle. We had to do all this matrix math in order to get that box to spin properly. So this video, we're going to develop a way to automate this process using what's called a move parent. Move parent. And it's really simple. It just involves reorganizing slightly the, the way that we organize our entities. So we have this object. Okay, and what we had before was a global transform, and we're going to keep that. This was the transform that we've been using so far. We usually call it M, but now we're going to add some new ones, a local transform and a move parent. The move parent is going to be, for, for the box example, Anytime the merry-go-round does something, since the box is sitting on the merry-go-round, the box has to do it too. So if the merry-go-round spins, then the box will spin. If someone moves the merry-go-round, then the, the box will have to move with it. If I'm sitting in a car, and the car moves, the car turns, the car does anything, then I do that with the car. And so the car is my move parent. If I'm sitting in a plane, the plane is my move parent. If some big strong guy picks me up and carries me around, then he's my move parent, which would be awkward. So in this example, let's look at the merry-go-round, okay, and the object, which is uh, which is the, this box right here. And this is the merry-go-round. The merry-go-round is going to have its own global and local and move parent, move parent, and so. Let's let's look at these values for the for the merry-go-round first. The merry-go-round doesn't have a move parent. It's fixed to the ground. I guess you could say the Earth is its is its move parent, but that just means it has kind of a it just means it has no move parent. And then it also has if it has no move parent, then we're also going to disregard the globe the the local coordinates and stick with only the global coordinates. In other words, if there's no move parent nothing changes. We're still using the global transform just like before. But if we're on an, ob we're, if we're an object that's sitting on a move parent, then it's the other way around. We ignore the global coordinates and we only use the local and the move parent. The move parent we will set to the merry-go-round. The move parent for the box will be the merry-go-round. And then we'll only consider our local coordinates in terms of the merry-go-round. Because if you remember, uh, let's see, from the last video, we took our box global coordinates and then we transformed them into the local coordinates of the merry-go-round and then spun them and then transformed back into global. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna forget this stuff and this right here is the local coordinates of the box, which I'm going to call L, and we're forgetting about this. So we're going to transform this into just spin times L. Now that's all we have to do to spin the box, spin times the local coordinates. And so when we want to calculate the global coordinates of the box, we can take this L that we have and take a look at our move parent. Its global coordinates are M, and so if we want to move our objects from the local coordinates of the move parent into the global coordinates, we just say m times l. And that'll get our box into the global coordinates. And we can calculate that on the fly. But now look at what we've done. Every time our m moves, every time the, the merry-go-round spins a little bit, we can use that to recalculate the global coordinates of the object on the fly and so we get this free child motion every time we move its move parent. 
That was a little bit weird, but I'm going to show you an example of this so that it becomes more clear. But first, let's look at the set move parent fu function. Move parent. There's a few things that we have to do here. One is what happens if we set our move parent to, let's say, the merry-go-round. Then we have to calculate the local coordinates, and this is how we're going to do that. Local coordinates are going to equal the merry-go-round uh, global transform, which actually we just called M, inverse times the global coordinates of the object, which in our case was uh, was B. So again, it's this it's this formula right here that takes B, which is the global coordinates of the object, and moves it into the local coordinates of the merry-go-round. And that's it. That's all we have to do to calculate the local coordinates. And then same thing, if we want to set the move parent to null, in other words, we took the box off the merry-go-round, we're going to toss it somewhere else. Now we have to transform, now we have to recalculate our global coordinates based on the local, which is even easier. Our new global coordinates, global coordinates, it's, again, it's this right here. We take the, the global coordinates of the object that used to be our move parent, which is M, and multiply times what our local coordinates were, and we'll get our global coordinates back. And that's really all there is to it. Now let's go in game and see an example of this and see how it works. So here we are in the code, and you can see I've set up this set uh, this get global transform function to automatically, if we have a move parent, if if move parent exists, then we'll take our local transform and multiply it through the global transform of the move parent, and that will change the local transform and move it into global space, and then we return it. If there's no move parent, then, then the global transform that we have is valid. We just return that. And same thing with get with set global transform. We have to, if we have a move parent, we have to transform it into local space. And so we do that by multiplying it through the inverse of the global transform of the parent to get a new local transform. So let's implement this set move parent function. Here's what we're going to do. If we have a move parent at this point, then uh, you can you can see that up here. I've already said that if if the move parent that we're assigning is the same as the move parent that we already have, then we return it to do nothing. So that means that at this point, there's either one or two possibilities. We're setting it to a mo different move parent, or we're setting it to null. So either way, what we want to do is change this guide to to go back to having. Uh, no move parent. And then if, if we're going to set them to a different move parent, then we'll do that later. But for now, let's just calculate the, the global transform. And that's easy, actually. We, we have a function for that. Ha, huh, done. And now we'll set the move, the move parent to whatever was passed in parent. If, if that was null, if it doesn't exist, then we can just, we're done, return. Otherwise, we have to calculate what is, what is going to be the local, the local transform. And well, that's easy. We have a formula for that. Move parent, get global transform, invert it, multiply that times our global transform. That'll get us our local transform. Really simple function to implement. And now let's go to the game here. And you can see that um, I've made it so that if the player gets near the merry-go-round, that's, that's what this function does right here. It, it does a distance comparison uh, to see how close we are to the merry-go-round. And if it's near the merry-go-round, then we set it as the merry-go-round as the move parent of the player. Otherwise, we give the parent, the player no move parent. And now I can come down here and re and remove this. This is where we set the 
toy box transform, I can remove that because it's going to be done automatically by our by our move parent code. Because in the uh, sorry in the initialization code right here, I set the move parent of the box to be the merry-go-round. So the box will be sitting on the merry-go-round. Everything's set up now. Let's do it. Compiling, building, running. There we go. So the box, we remove the code that that transforms the box to be moving with the merry-go-round. But since the move parents of the box is the merry-go-round, everything still works fine. And now if I go and stand on the merry-go-round, you can see I'm moving around with the merry-go-round. The effect is not, I'm going to move out to the corner so it's exaggerated. There you go. You can see I'm moving in a circle with the merry-go-round. I'm staying on the point of this merry-go-round, except if you're observant, you'll see an obvious problem, which is my view is not turning around with the merry-go-round. It's staying, it's staying facing in one direction. And that is a problem we will solve in the next video. Cool.